In this video, we're going to be reviewing some perimeter and area formulas for two-dimensional shapes. We'll go through the basic ones. On the teacher website, I've also included a little reference sheet here that has all of the formulas for the basic shapes that we'll be working with. So feel free to download that and or print it off if you have that ability. But definitely refer to this to help you when you're practicing uh, finding area of these shapes. However, we'll include it in our notes as we do examples today. So the first shape that we're going to start off with is the parallelogram, just the generic one here. We have our perimeter formula uh, in reference to this diagram, our side A and our side B. There, if we add those two lengths and double that sum, we'll get the perimeter around the shape. Although, you're always welcome to just add up all the side lengths as if you were to walk around it. The area is going to be our base length, or that length over here, that side B, times our height. Notice that the height is not the same as side A. Side A is a diagonal sort of length, a little bit longer than the height here. So be careful there. In our area formula, we need to use these two sides that are perpendicular, the base and the height. And I try and emphasize that right here in our reference sheet. The base and the height are the perpendicular sides. So look for that right angle symbol there to kind of clue you in as to what two values to use when plugging in and finding the area of the shape. All right, so let's start off with our parallelogram. We'll use these two formulas. To find the area, we're gonna take our base length times our height. And so here we see that the height is four. Our base length is gonna be the same as this side. These two opposite sides are the same in a parallelogram. So 12 times four will give us our area there. And that's 48. With our units for area, we're going to make sure and square them. We have a unit times a unit. Whenever you multiply something by itself, you square it. So with area, we always say we have square units. So this here is square kilometers. It's kind of a really big parallelogram. Not something that's going to fit on our paper there. To find the perimeter, we could add up all the sides. You could do 12 plus 6, over here is another 12, and over here is another 6. You could add up all four of those values. Let's go ahead and use this little shortcut. Because we have two pairs of opposite sides that are the same length, we can just add up one of our pairs of side lengths here and just double that. So 12 plus 6 is 18. If we double that, we get 36, and our units are kilometers. So we go all the way around the shape, that's 36 kilometers. And to fill up this shape inside, we need 48 square kilometers. All right, when we get into our special types of parallelograms, like the rectangle or the square, a unique tap thing happens in that the, uh, the base and the height end up being the length and the width. So we can simplify our formulas here to just be uh, for our area, base times height, or length times width. And for our perimeter, we could say it's the length plus the width doubled. All right, so having a width of 7 and a length of 2.5, if I multiply those two units, 7 times 2.5 gives me 17.5, or 17 and a half square feet fill up our shape. To walk around our shape or to outline it, we need 7 plus 2.5 plus another 7 plus another 2.5. You could add up those four sides or just add up two of the sides, the length and the width, and double it. So 7 plus 2.5 is 9.5. If we double that, we get 19 feet. All right, one more parallelogram here, a special one called the square. The unique thing about the square is that all sides are the same, 
So there's another way that we can simplify our formulas, which I included on our reference sheet here. Since the perimeter would just add up four sides that were all the same, you could just use multiplication instead there, and four times the side length would give you the perimeter. To find the area because the base and the height, or the length and width, are the exact same thing, then you can just square that side length value, multiply it by itself. And there's another unique way to find the area of a square if you were instead given the diagonal length, the length from one corner to the other, you could also use that to find the area by using this version of the area formula where you take the diagonal length squared and you cut it in half after you square it. That should be equal to the side length squared. All right, so taking a look at this example of a square, the perimeter, I could add up five to itself four times, or I could multiply four times five, or just to show you that this formula that we provided at the beginning also works as well. I could take the base times the height, or sorry, the base plus the height, five plus five, that's 10, and I could double that, and I still get the exact same length for the perimeter, 20 centimeters. Find the area, since we're given the side lengths, you could just square five, five times five, or think about base times height, which is the exact same thing. Five squared or five times five is 25, and we got square centimeters as our units here. Another thing to think about, as I was saying with the diagonal, since a half of a square is an isosceles triangle, triangle with two equal sides here. Then we know that the length or the hypotenuse here, this diagonal length would be the side length times the square root of two. So the diagonal length is five times the square root of two. So if you square that, well you get 50. And if you cut that in half, well then you get 25. So another way that we could use the diagonal there to find the area, that's a little bit of a bonus there. All right, moving on, let's talk about the triangle next. The unique thing about the triangle is that it is half of a parallelogram. It's half of a rectangle or it's half of a square. So if we use our formula for parallelograms, base times height to find the area, and we just cut it in half, well, that'll be the area of a triangle. So again, unique in that we need to locate the base length and the height, again, those two perpendicular sides. That's what we need to plug into our formula. And then we'll cut that in half and we'll get the area of a triangle instead. So for example here, we have a triangle. If I imagine that it was half of a surrounding rectangle, what I could do is I could find the area of the rectangle, which would be base times height, 15 times six, and I could cut it in half to just find the area of the triangle. So that's what we're doing here. We're going to take our base of our triangle, 15 meters, multiply it by the height, the perpendicular height there of 6 meters, and then cut that product in half. So 15 times 6 is 90, and if I cut that in half, well, I get 45 square meters. The perimeter of a triangle can be found by just adding up the three sides. Sometimes you have unique triangles. For example, here we have an isosceles triangle. So again, you could add up the three sides or you could know that we have two equal sides. So you could just double that leg length there. So I could add nine plus nine or I could do two times nine. Or if I had an isosceles triangle and then knowing that I have three equal sides, well again, I can use multiplication instead of division. Uh, they're not super shortcuts, but you could play around with those if you'd like if you have any of those special triangles. So here we have a perimeter of 33 meters. And that's how we can work with triangles. All right, on to the next shape. We're on to a circle here. For the circle, in order to find its perimeter, or as we work with circles, we call it the circumference, but it's the exact same thing as the distance around the shape. 
and working with the area of a circle, we need to know what uh, either diameter or radius means because we're going to use those in our formulas. So in a circle, the radius length is the length from the center of the circle to the outside of the circle. The diameter is the distance across the center of a circle. So as long as you draw it exactly in the middle of the circle, that's the diameter length. As it turns out, the radius is half of the diameter, or the diameter is twice the radius. So here to find the circumference, or the distance around a circle, the formula is 2 times the radius. Well, if I double the radius, I know that that's diameter. So another way to represent this instead is to use the diameter. And then we're going to multiply either of those by this symbol called pi, which is a number. It's a number that can be rounded to about 3.14, although your calculator will most likely have a button called the pi button there. So if you can find that symbol on your calculator and press it, it should give you more of an accurate representation of pi, although it's not going to be entirely accurate as pi is never ending and our calculator can only hold so many values, but it's better. So if you need to multiply by pi, use that pi button on your calculator to get a more approximate answer. To find the area or what we would need to fill up the inside of a circle, what we're going to do is we're going to take the radius value and we're going to square it, and then we're going to multiply by pi. So let's practice doing that. To find the circumference of this circle with a radius of 9 inches, I could double my radius, so 2 times 9 is 18, and then multiply by pi, that would give me the distance around the circle. So if I do on my calculator 18 times pi, should get approximately 56.55 inches. Rather than round my answer and approximate it, what I can do is I can write my answer in terms of pi. So I can just write my number with pi attached to it, and that's actually the most accurate way to represent the value rather than rounding it using a decimal form. So sometimes test questions will ask you to leave it in terms of pi, Others will ask you to use the pi button or approximate it using 3.14 and represent it as a decimal instead. So be able to do both and recognize those instructions. All right, to find the area of this circle, because I know that the radius is 9, I can square my radius. 9 squared, 9 times 9 is 81. And then if I multiply that by pi, I get my area. So again, in terms of pi, I could just say it's 81 pi square inches. Or if I use my calculator and do 81 times pi, then I should get a decimal that's approximately 254.47 square inches. So that's how much we would need to fill up that circle. So there's working with circles. We'll do a little bit more uh, later on where we find just a piece of our area there. It's called a sector. So we'll find the area of a sector maybe in the near future.